Ah, I love that music. All right, better. There we go. <laughs> So, so with a red team here. Team old men, manly men, and manly old men, for that matter. Oops. A button to accept. I see, last time we had just raided Eblon. We had used the... Uh, oh, I probably bumped that down another notch or two. How about that? Yeah, there we go. We had just gone through uh, Eblon Cave and raided all the goodies therein. And mostly weapons and stuff we can't use until we get done with Magnetic Cave, but so it goes. Anyway, if you are here, or you, if you're here for the Darkest Dungeon, Ben is taking a break today. Uh, and we're jumping straight in with the, uh, with the Final Fantasy. <laughs> okay, yeah, he, to, to, uh, <laughs> since, since I am around, just not in streaming mood. Um, the basic story is that we tried to fix the transmission in our car, and it did not work. The most important thing is, as all of you might remember, I have a really bad leg, and involved a lot of getting up, getting down, moving <laughs> around, right foot in, right foot out, shake it all about. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm actually in a lot of pain right now, and I'm probably going to be taking some aspirin or ibuprofen or something. I'm definitely going to be uh, resting my leg. Mm. So, unless, uh, <laughs> unless you want your commentary to be about every five minutes, wow, my leg really hurts. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be leaving it to Wayne this time. Mm. But assuming that he does not beat the game... <laughs> which is not going to happen. Which is not going to happen. <laughs> I should be back next time. Mm. So take care, y'all. Until next time. And that was Ben, everybody. Yay! Yay. About, about what you would expect when the two, two nerds get together and try to fix a car. <laughs> Actually, the, the big problem ended up being we just got the wrong type of, of uh, jack for it. Our jack was sufficiently jacked. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's see, can we... I think that's the way the Enterprise, right? Speaking of nerds... <laughs> Ah, yes. Yeah, we should probably put... How does that work? I think it's whoever is in... Uh, oh, no, you actually hit the... There we go. That would make a little more sense we're talking to. And there's stuff we can do here in Baron we couldn't do before. Right. Raiding the uh, castle for goodies. There was a guard blocking this tower earlier. They're called Click and Clack the Tappet Brothers. That one right, that one right over my head. <laughs> Ooh, what do I have here? Either. Ethers are nice. Yes, yeah, since I don't plan on making you all sit through watching Tella cast Osmos on every single enemy, uh, the ethers are going to be very important for uh, getting us through the magnetic cave. Oh, did I miss one? I missed two. And over here, let's go ahead and show off what happens if you try to come here early. Oh, that's actually lets us go down. Here we go. Uh, we do not know Car Talk, one of the most fantastic radio shows. Not, not, not familiar with it. The king is still alive-ish. <laughs> yep. Maybe he was a idol on all along. Hard, hard to tell. Or he was just that much of a bad dude that he became a you know super super warrior ghost when he died. It's kind of funny, I guess. Uh, makes you kind of wonder how uh, uh, Cognazzo was able to take him out, but maybe I got to jump on him. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that should be everything here. We got our rest. We are. I'm gonna put it off as long as I can. It is time to go grab ourselves a black chocobo and. Ah, head to Magnetic Cave. <laughs> yeah, I think I mentioned last time the DS version made it a lot easier. Uh, for one thing, arrows were unlimited use, so all you had to do was get your hands on uh, one or two versions of the higher tier arrows, and you'd be good to go. Also, in a bit of Final Fantasy 1-ishness, 
uh, you have to park, you know, park a ways away from where you need to go and walk the rest of the way. Anybody ever, the first time they played Final Fantasy 1, take a uh, like start on, like we went to the, the Castle of uh, Ordeals, you end up, uh, what do I have here? Uh, let me take a quick look. Those guys are, it was the back of week to fire, I remember that. Uh, but yeah, we have park your, park your car just a little too far away and have to walk the long way before you realize you can just use the canoe so you get there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Fire 2 should do a number on these guys so we can soften them all up. Ooh, not, not as much damage as I was thinking. Yeah, this is this is basically where this, why this part of the game is so hard, is you have a uh, pretty pretty difficult you run just to, just to make progress. And then you've got, you know, the, the cave where your, your higher tier stuff isn't even available. See, I think the problem with that one is, is the penalty for back attack, for back rank. So just focus on these guys first. He does a lot of counter damage, too. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I think uh, if uh, Sid had his... his little, oh, that, that's even worse. Sorry. If Sid had uh, his some kind of uh, command attack that didn't trigger a counter, it probably worked better, too. Right, let's use the fire rod, save some... Oh, I wonder these guys can cast... Never mind. <laughs> yeah, might as well at least cast to Osmos or Psyche in this game when I have a good opportunity to. And we have a white Chocobo coming up. I can afford to have Cecil keep the HP topped off. There we go. And Yang need one too? No. Uh, let's see. Cannibals. That's a pretty on the nose name there. <laughs> At least I thought these things were weak to fire. Maybe I'm wrong. We can find out. 260. And, and they are weak to fire. So wait a minute, it's only 200 and weak to fire. Can I zap them with one fire one? Okay, Yank can definitely do it in one hit if, if they're in the front rank. Survey says... No, not even, not even close. Hmm. Okay, so there's definitely have to be some fire twos on them. Then. I can handle that. I think these guys are weak to fire as well. So, uh, what is that? Poison? Oh, it's like sap. Hmm, the plant infecting us with sap. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just go a little, little overboard on the MP getting there, since we've got a top off with a white chocobo. From us there anyway. Yeah, let's do one more and just throw a Firaga at them. Well, we, yeah, <laughs> and then, then we don't get any plant enemies. Well, we can use a Thundaga instead. It sounds, it sounds like fun. Alright. So, we'll do that. Let's find out how much HP those things have, just to... Just for my edification. And... Flip three. 300, okay. So, so if our melee guys were just a little bit better dudes, we wouldn't have a problem here. But, yeah, your, your number of attacks and damage scales with very nice. Uh, scales with your stats, and that just takes time for it to go up. There's some kind of weird, weird growth curve in this game, where near like you start off with only one or two attacks, then you end up, you end the game at around with like 12 to 15 or something, and a lot of those are backloaded. There he is. So, as always, I think 40 should be just enough. Yeah, just enough. Perfect. I, th I saw some. Get your chocobo. They're faster than we are. <laughs> and I, fa I definitely fail a chocobo wrangling. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Good grief. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Let's see, and then where were the K 
carrots in here. There was one right up here, right? Or... Oh, maybe not. So need the exercise. That's true. You guys, put on, you guys clearly put on too much weight. Oh, I guess there weren't any. Well, in that case, I'll just grab our black chocobo and move on. Everybody grew to that for a little bit. I figure that one of the first games with a Chocobo theme remix would be one of the best ones. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. Let's get everybody. Let's try the dancing dagger first because I don't remember if it if it actually counts or not. And then start taking take it all off. Uh, let's see. Did I end up grabbing? A, hmm. I don't remember if I ended up grabbing enough hats for everybody or not. And then Ruby recourse. All right. Then, but Tello should already still be uh, yeah, like that. And Wooden Hammer. Other than that, he should be fine. Yeah. That piece all good to go. And as Yang will tell you, his claws are, are unaffected. So he is likewise good to go. Alright. Metallic things will be too heavy to control. And then that 90 MP is going to have to get us pretty far. <laughs> anyway, what I'd like to do on the way in is kind of like, sa we'll save the side paths of... Okay, that does count. We'll save the side paths for later, and basically just go through as quickly as we can on the on the way in. Uh, these annoying little things. I think these are one of the enemies you can psych from. So let's... Uh, Keep from one first. Find out if they're weak to anything. Okay, good to know that those guys can take uh, take care of business. 150. Weak versus holy. Okay. And arrows. So even if I do get, even if I do have to give Cecil a bow, uh, at least he should still be able to take care of the bats. And do it from the back rank too. As the other school of thought, too, since Cecil and Tella both get exit, you could also figure have a little more misery on the way in and uh, just, just skip, the, skip your way out. <laughs> um, let's see, we'll do... Mute arrows, I believe, are super effective against mages. But let's just stick with the holy arrows for now. So that will be quite, that will be like lightning versus Gyarados effective on, on the bats. We had a great bow, right, great bow. Did we get another attack out of that? We did not. Okay. So this should be this should be interesting. <laughs> Alright. One good thing is that he can still cover a full effectiveness from the from the back row. So if we need to do that, we still can. And counter rate doesn't seem too bad. <laughs> and there we go. Okay. Uh, the Mind Flayers are pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, totally not Mind Flayers, guys. Are pretty cool on that you can get a summon for Ridio from them. <laughs> well, Lorax thought Zubats are weak to uh, Electric, Psychic, Ice, and Rock. <laughs> uh, let's see. I know you can sight from these guys. See, that one should be on the stud, though. Blast. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Oh, so the magic resistance is too high for that. <laughs> it's me, your friend Zoidberg. <laughs> All right. Fingers crossed for the drop, but probably not. <laughs> and anytime you hear the victory theme extend for a note or two longer, you know you're about to get a drop, so you get your fingers crossed, and then inevitable disappointment when you get like a potion or something. 
Oh, you can't. Oh, okay, but a save. I thought you could fit through that way. And then we've got. I think. Yeah, we'll go through here and around. It's pretty fast if you just basically try to just run through it. Okay, now one of these. I think the. I want to say it's the. Yeah, I think the pythons were the snake enemies I was thinking of that were just really, really fragile. Good grief. Okay, so let's try try psych out on her and see what we got. <laughs> Not bad. I must say weak to holy as well. I didn't think that giving giving Cecil white arrows would do much good, but apparently it's actually being pretty effective. We definitely have a couple places to stop on our way back. Let's see. Back rank. Arrow plus holy should be good. There we go. This actually this is this actually isn't going too bad. Expecting a lot a lot worse. <laughs> so let's see how well this does. Nothing, okay. So yeah, we're at the point where the, the fixed damage on the rods is making them completely a waste of time, which you know is is fair enough. If they had any kind of bonus, like matching the element to the spells you cast, that would make them uh, even more useful. But as it is, you know, you might as well just give him the cure staff and uh, have him spend his turns that way. Let's see, was that enough? The two of them together should be enough. Especially since Cecil's contributing nothing. <laughs> okay, so Cure Staff. Oh, we don't have the Cure Staff, right. Uh, Porum had that. Oh, no, I do. Okay, I didn't have it. And that was Paralyzed, okay. Not the end of the world. I, I want to say that Blast is the same thing as Blaster. It can uh, Paralyze, Kill, or... Uh, I think that might be it, just Paralyze or Kill. Like that. You know, it's like, oh, uh, actually, I got a drop. Is it going to be potion? <laughs> oh, oh well. So this is actually the last room, I believe. Use us take the front. We'll let Cecil in the back. Use the heal, even though we're doing pretty good on HP. And here I was here I was actually pretty worried about how the dungeon would go, but we're doing we're doing okay. And yeah, as soon as we're done with this, we can go through the way, the way back normally. Okay, that wasn't quite enough to take care of them. I can definitely bring some pain too with that uh 60 damage of somebody blocking in the back rank. Granted, that was Tella. So he... <laughs> Here we go. Here's the encounter rate I was worried about. There is there there one of the treasure we treasures we skipped was a charm claw, which would have been really good for Yang against these uh, against the ogres. But I think we can still make do without them. <laughs> Let's try on that one. How did he miss a snake with a face that doesn't move? <laughs> Uh, we've got a save point coming up, so I'm going to throw down Virus on the crowd. Cast very quickly, does a fair bit of non-elemental damage. It's pretty much good for taking out things that, that you otherwise don't have a good answer for. The level. Alright. So, did any of the any of the D and D fans in the audience have any mind flayer stories? <laughs> it seems like a pretty pretty common uh, you know, jerk DM monster to throw around. I think some of some of, of course I think uh, Final Fantasy One actually has some of the most famous uh, mind flayer stories because the you know, they were called sorcerers in the NES version, and they have the the one two punch of chance for instant death on attack, you know, representing the, the tentacle uh, and suck your brain, um, the extraction move. Then, of course, the mind blast to paralyze you all to keep you from 
running away or fighting back. So yeah, they pretty much they you know they pretty much nailed them. <laughs> yeah, personally, I don't really I don't really use those too much. Yeah, we we end up using the uh, the SRDs and stuff a lot. So the public the IP locked. Oh, we can also say we'll explore the room a little bit. Yep, there's a crystal room. We have the IP specific monsters like displacer beasts and uh, beholders and stuff. We don't use as much. The blues always burns for jerks. <laughs> all right, everybody. Whenever you see somebody in a text-only RPG speaking in all caps, what does that mean to you? Are they yelling at you? Does it mean they're uh, do, doing like robot speak? How do you how do you interpret that? This is a pretty much you have to lose a fight. You can try fighting back against him, but uh, in the end, he will just zap you with uh, way too much magic to deal with. It's actually not bad, though. <laughs> I also love the pre-fight dialogue implying that you've made it there the entire dungeon with uh, with Sid and Cecil uh, paralyzed the whole fight. Uh, that would not be a great great strategy. <laughs> I would, I would not recommend trying to do it the way the game thinks you're doing it. Well. <laughs> oh, poor Lorax has never played D&D. He's such a shameful nerd. Much like, uh, speaking of nerds, much like Troy from Star Trek, let's do a reference there. Uh, Edward, C Edward senses uh, great fear and pain and is going to do something about it. I guess, like, play us a, play us a dirge, I guess, but... <laughs> Here's the funny thing, it's like, you, you can get, you can get to the, get to the elf, and if you don't actually go meet Edward and get the either the twin harp or the echo grass or whatever it is in the version you're playing. Uh, that will just be an, that will just be a game over. Yep. Edward has his one moment to shine and you will do it. Or if you don't rather if you don't let him do it then you are pretty much screwed. <laughs> Hipsters cannot take Edward's so uh, harp playing. And the dubstep is overpowered. <laughs> Shut on, you crazy diamond. But we cannot control the metallic weight while he is playing. I want to say the DS version or something had like a, a note that it was a tune that he... Master, that was like an anti fey you know, piece or something. Considering, I think, uh, I believe the Dark Elf is the only elf, and uh, what was he? I think so. Yeah, this is your cue to switch everybody back. And let's see, what did we have? Uh, all right, I have to take away, the, take off the bow first, then give him a. Um, I don't think he's weak to holy. Oh, I can switch if he is. And re-equip his paladin stuff. The paladin gear is pretty good for magic resistance. That's the that, that's the orb icon on the bottom there. Let's see, did I? Oh, I guess I didn't grab a. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loses some magic resistance with that one. Uh, but he, yeah, he does do physical attacks. So, I'll leave him with the cure staff. Uh, leave him with that, you know. And Sid. You would think Silver would be super effective against an elf, but I don't believe so. Headband, fine, that's fine, that's all fine. Uh, then, right, and he's stuck with that, right, because he uses gauntlets. And then, Yank can get one, though. Eh, might as well give Tella the Silver one, too. Okay, 
Now, here's the thing. You can actually just leave this room while Edward is playing, and you're good to go on the, on the, on the, on the magnetic stuff. You can go all the way back. You can leave. You can go to the save point. You can do any of that fun stuff. But uh, Dark Elf isn't that difficult of a fight. I, I, I don't remember anyway. So I think we're just going to go deal with them. How are we doing on 86? So 4 at 82% effectively to multiply by 0. 0.8. That would be less than that. Way less than that. And I'm pretty sure he's at the point now where he doesn't need the dancing dagger. I also remembered after the last stream that the big big reason to use the dancing dagger is actually to get it when you go to, when you go back to Baron with the twins. And uh, you can have Pollum wield that bad boy, and he will be a lot more effective in the uh, in the sewers on the sewer level. That's okay. Uh, let's get everybody. So they took Protect and Shell out in the the easy version, which in a way makes it harder. Uh, we'll save slow for when he transforms. So how about blink on somebody that is otherwise pretty fragile? Haste on a heavy hitter would work well too, but we don't we don't really have a heavy hitter as part of the problem. Ooh, nice. The uh, the the, sa the uh, save or die spell uh, saving is always good. Uh, hmm. Actually, it's Berserk Yang. <laughs> What's the matter, Lorax? Uh, Lorax has never seen a uh, naked green dark elf with uh, candy in. I can kind of see that, but that is that is a him. If you were if you weren't sure. You are given a pass on that one because it, because it is an elf. <laughs> okay, now I think he's weak to weak to holy, so we're gonna hit him with slow. Nice. Yeah, Yang is pretty much all, Yang pretty much exists to just punch things. So if you don't need to change his claws out, then just let him do his thing. Let's see if he's weak to holy. <laughs> Surprise! Whoa, we're definitely weak to holy. Okay, that was uh, that was quite a jump in damage. Uh, and is that? Oh, wait, I yeah, I switched to the the uh, legend sword. Oh, yeah, Tello does not have the spell. No, he doesn't get holy or flare. Oh, okay. <laughs> Welp. Yeah, surprise, the elf is really a dragon. Yep, the you know, jerk, jerk elves aren't can't be happy with regular forms of near immortality. They have to secretly be another form of near immortal uh, creature. <laughs> wow, Keen says. <laughs> yeah, they made him a pretty tough fight in the DS version. That was an absolute curb stomp in, uh, in this one. <laughs> and granted, using MP on, on Tella to slow the boss and then berserk your melee people is always good times, you know. But, uh, yep. So start grabbing some goodies. And of course, using, the in, using a tent again on the way back out. And uh, one of the things that... Well, here's some, one of the important things about the Black Chocobo, too is that oh, oh yeah, this is something that you you may or may not know and I think I mentioned it uh, last time but uh, if you once you turn the crystal into the the uh, the Epcot center <laughs> like the epops or what they what they, what they call them in the DS version uh, the the eight uh, the eight priestesses in Troya then you are you are locked in on the tower to Zot. you cannot uh, take the second you go on your airship it will take you there <laughs> and Lord says, no, I have such a hard time getting an Earth Crystal. Micah gets it easily. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but on the other hand, though, Micah can also destroy monster generators and not, to, not have to do with random encounters. And we don't have, we don't, we aren't quite so lucky. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you don't actually turn it back in, you can still take your Black Chocobo back and use your airship. That's something I didn't think to try until probably my third or fourth time you know, playing the game. I want to say regular ogres are weak to holy too. Yeah, 
So it's weak to hold a yes, but back row uh, penalty. Uh, evening that out. And actually, uh, so we're about to, yeah, we're about to go rest anyway. So let's go do that. Yeah, Mecha can also turn to a Kung Fu Sheep. <laughs> Well, <laughs> thanks, Tella. <laughs> yeah, on the way back, we'll be able to get that, uh, get the, the fairy uh, claw, and that will definitely take care of the ogres. I think they have about 700 HP. And you can see why the mad ogres were such a threat in Eblon Castle, because, you know, the, the next dungeon in the plot is against regular ogres, and you fight their big brothers, you know, there. But it's, it's also like they said, if you don't do it, if you don't do it now, there's not much point in doing it later. You know, the, the goodies aren't as good. So. Okay. Yeah, I would say that was, uh, that went really well. <laughs> uh, probably one of the smoother runs I've had through the, uh, through the Magnetic Cave. Which is just feels just weird. But again, like I said, I haven't played the original game since I've played both the Final Fantasy Chronicles version and the DS version in the interim. And those obviously those make it... I, I wouldn't say that... I wouldn't say that the, the Chronicles version was harder. I mean, it was the hard-type version, but basically it just mean, that just means the more complex version. It uh, didn't actually... You know, the fact that you get buffs and special abilities put back in the game, I'd say probably contributes to making it a little bit a little bit easier in some ways. I don't know what all of the what what actual kind of numerical uh, difficulty changes it would be from the, the easy type version. Hey King Concurso was incredibly smooth and never remembered it going that easily when he played it, right. Yeah, yeah same here. It's just that's really shocking. Maybe the uh, the game has some mercy on me. <laughs> We still have some sort of a ways to go. Most of the hard part's done, so we're just going to start speeding things up with some magic, and I'll probably burn some uh, some ethers if we need to. I mean, this is the point of the game where you use them. You don't really need them later on, because you get so much uh, you get so much magic, you get so much MP on your on your casters. You know, your Rydia and Rosa both just get hundreds and hundreds in the end game. Or curious. There it is. And since I don't think anything has been weak to anything besides fire here, let's go ahead and tag that in. That way anything that might be inadvertently resistant to ice isn't going to be dragging the damage down. Let's see. Well, next up is... Yeah, yeah that from it, that, yeah, this, this order of operations works out better. Because that way you've got Cecil with a holy attack on the Naga. I should probably have to, I, if you remember to have Tella use the Cure Staff and not parry, not that it matters there, because all the enemies are dead, but it's going to have to get into. Okay, and. Right, yeah, this room's so nice. It's kind of a short cave. <laughs> you know, really. Oh, that's interesting. Take a look at that. Cecil and Yang have the same uh, HP. That's one of the advantages that Yang gets. He has a ton of uh, HP compared to the other guys. If you if he if he was actually in for the entire game, he'd end up with, I believe, maxed out uh, strength and stamina, and uh, I think the highest HP. I'd have to remember how Final Fantasy IV Advance handled it on. Uh, Game Boy Advance because they actually do let you uh, bring your team bring your team back in for the for the end game uh, and I think the uh, what's it called the version with uh, like I think complete which is kind of a funny funny name for the game's been re-released so often but the complete collection on PSP included that version yeah I never actually played the advanced version because uh, because it had a ATB glitch that basically made the game too easy because your because your teammates 
because your team went uh, so quickly compared to the enemies. And it took, all, it took a lot of the challenge out of it. Sid is, uh, Sid is doing some work, too. Alright. Cure? Cure 3? <laughs> ah, boring bunch of potions. Lame. Oh, here, okay, here we go. This is a little more interesting. <laughs> but, you know, now we can see the differences there with, uh, with, uh, Cecil getting the Holy Bonus and, uh, Yang getting the, uh, the Charm Claw Bonus. Yup. That is now one shot. It's one shot territory. So I, I like how I like it when games let you kind of do that. You kind of customize your gear to the opposition you're fighting, without it without it just being elemental, well, elemental rock paper scissors. You know, when things are another headband. Okay, I didn't realize ogres could drop headbands. Hmm. That's a fun thing you can do too with uh, with the drop the drops from enemies and in games with random encounters like that. It's like how did they use the thing that they're giving you? Oh, I didn't know that was a safe point either. I mean, I, I did obviously. I just forgotten. But <laughs> so that would have made it that would have made it even easier. Let's see, is there anything over this one? Yeah, there's one here. What do we have here? Either. Yeah, that's not bad. So yeah, if I'd taken that first save point, I could have been having Tella, be, Tella been spamming MP probably. It's still been okay. <laughs> huh. I guess I probably should have just let that play out, but... <laughs> I gotta get the Mind Flayer uh, summon this game. <laughs> I don't think I've ever gotten that one. I think I mentioned earlier that I did get the Imp summon once, and I got the uh, the Bomb summon. I think those are the only ones. I don't I don't remember if the Cockatrice summon is even in the uh, even in Final Fantasy II. They're nice. They're nice Easter eggs, and I kind of wish that you'd been able to get to get more monsters there actually. But as it is, you know, random drops on a game where the drop drop hits are notoriously rare, as anybody who's ever tried to farm pink tails can tell you. Good golly, is that insane? <laughs> if uh, if this way was here, you know, she'd well, I can mention that when I lent her my copy of the DS version, uh, I had actually left off on when I was trying to get the. Because basically, I think I meant, I think I showed him off in Fable. But there is that naming way guy, and he exists to change your characters' names from the defaults, which is you know, uh, well, you know, all, all kind of kind of an amusing artifact from back in the era before voice acting, uh, or <laughs> or could say you know, and partially into the era with voice acting, with uh, the captain of the Xenarchand Abes and uh, whatever else that people would call Titus <laughs> or Titus. But uh, yeah, and without but since people have names in in the DS version as it's fully voice acted, that they uh, he he has like no purpose in life and does other things. And near the end of it, one of the last things he wants you to do is when he becomes Pudding Way, and he wants you to get him some uh, some pudding that you have to get. You basically you have to get something some some pudding item by farming a pudding enemy. And it's a yeah, very rare drop, and you basically have to do it over. You fight the enemies over and over again, save the game, load the game, use the alarm things. You can have edge steel and all that. And I had spent basically a week of lunch breaks at work trying to get that. I spent about two and a half hours of farming. I just gave up on it. And then I then yeah, I lent it to her, and I haven't played it since. You know, I beaten the game once. That was my second playthrough trying to do the. The silly, do all the augments, and that might be my third playthrough actually. That's some kind of optimal run thing, and uh, got there, and then she got it like her first try. 
Like, I, I, think, I think she got it from the first time she was going through the, the cave. And it's like, oh, is this the item you're looking for? It's like, <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. I, I'm sure I, I, I'm so... At some point, I'm going to be paying the karmic debt for getting uh, the two Heaven Swords in five minutes in Symphony of the Night. And some people have spent five hours trying to get one of those, one of those bad boys. <laughs> okay, we're almost out. I think we have one last goodie over here. I, I could have sworn there were more items, but I'm probably thinking of the sealed cave. Uh, that one had tons of loot in it. That's another fun one, too, with the differences between the, quote, easy type. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop following up after Yang until I can verify if the enemy got charmed or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, in the other versions, you have items that cast uh, Wall, which means that and you can reflect the instant kill move that the trapdoors do uh, to you in Sealed Cave. So if you have those items, you can go there like right, really early in the in the Dark World before you get the before you get reflect on on Rosa, and that makes it kind of trivial to just get everything. And there are other ways to cheese the doors too. I mean, don't get me wrong. 